Well, I just sat through over an hour of bureau speak with Bill Croyle in the Department of Public Works uh, press briefing yesterday, Thursday, the 13th of April, on the reopening of the spillway at Oroville. So let me try and condense what he said and get it into layman's terms that all of us can understand. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. By the way, this is coming to you from the Motel 6 in beautiful Monterey, California. Family vacation time. It's 10 a.m. on Friday the 14th of April. About an hour ago, they was the reopening of the spillway at Oroville. I'm looking at the data and the numbers are not quite up yet. But at a lake level at 863 feet, they're forced, of course, to um, reopen the spillway and get the lake level down. Uh, big news yesterday is they broke the record for the uh, wettest year on record in the uh, Feather River area. 89.7 inches of rain in the watershed. Uh, average between a bunch of different uh, stations broke the record of 88.5 inches back in uh, the 82-83 season. So they're still flowing the Hyatt power plant at 13,000 feet and they've removed, uh, call it 1.6 million cubic feet of debris out of the Thermalito diversion pool. Two more weather systems are inbound. It's all playing into the factors as to how they're going to operate the spillway. Snow level is estimated to be right between four and 6,000 feet. This time when they run the spillway, they're going to run it at a slightly reduced throttle setting as to what they've been using. They're going to try it at 35,000 feet this time and try to get a good long 10 to 14 day spill as they bring that water level from 863 for 863 or so feet down to 835 feet. Remember, that's where they have to shut it off because of the that's the inlet to the spillway and they don't want to scour that inlet to the spillway. So while they release the water from the spillway, again, they're going to be bringing down or shutting off the Hyatt power plant. This time, not so much out of an abundance of concern of, of um, high water levels in the Thermalito diversion pool, but this time they need to do um, some electrical maintenance work connecting the shoe fly connection. What's a shoe fly connection? That's an electrician's term for a temporary connection. A temporary electrical connection. Remember when the um, this whole disaster started the original design had the Hyatt power plant wires going over the emergency spillway when those wires all had to be removed because they were going to get uh, pulled down and tumbled down like a set of dominoes. Well that entire structure has been changed. They've used those expensive helicopters to plant towers and move the entire Hyatt power plant transmission line away from the emergency spillway. So now is the time that they're going to connect that new power line system up to the Hyatt power plant and back to the grid using the new transmission lines. The whole uh, going a whole different direction away from the emergency spillway. At this press briefing, we also learned that they're going to be doing some major uh, tunnel inspection work at the Hyatt power plant during this period as well. And when they get done with this spill, they're going to bring the Hyatt power plant on back at half capacity. And I'll show you here, and I don't know why they don't do this in the briefing. I'll show you here in the pictures exactly what they're doing. It makes so much more sense if they did this. Here's the Oroville Dam, the Hyatt power plant located under the dam. Exhausts right out here, discharges right down there into the Thermalito diversion pool. The intake structure is located right here. Two intakes sloped and gated to control water temperature for the fish downstream so they can pull water out of the reservoir at different elevations to get the correct temperature for the ecology downstream goes through two different penstock tunnels. Penstock is that tunnel that takes your water inlet to your power plant. Remember, uh, turbine number one is out of service and getting rebuilt out of state and is expected to be back soon. In the in the process of getting number one turbine back into position, they're going to go ahead and shut off the water to penstock number one, get in there and do a complete inspection and repair of any work that needs to be done on this number one penstock tunnel and prepare uh, turbines number two and three for future replacement. So once we get turbine number one up back and operating, we're going to have a pretty much a new or rebuilt and ready to go tunnel to go with it. 
Remember too, this is a generating and pumping power plant, so all six generate, all six turbine, <laughs> All six turbines can generate electricity and three of them can pump water back into the reservoir. The turbines discharge through the two original diversion tunnels that were built at the original construction of the dam and discharge into the Thermalito diversion pool. And inside of diversion tunnel number two is where the river valve outlet system is located. They're getting the controls put back in for the river valve outlet system so that this is all going to be able to work together at half speed this summer. Again, it's all going to be working at half speed because this tunnel is going to be closed for maintenance and only this tunnel and these three turbine, turbines, number four, five, and six, are going to be operating. By the way, we finally got the answer to this river valve outlet system that yes in fact the the new and improved river valve outlet system is designed to work in conjunction with the Hyatt power plant at high head pressures in other words when the reservoir is up high you can flow water out of this through this river valve outlet system once it's up and operating in conjunction with the Hyatt power plant which gives you an additional 5000 CFS flow which would have been great during this entire period could have possibly reduced the number of spills down to just one, in my humble opinion. The time frame for the repair work on this tunnel and getting the number one turbine back into uh, play is about four to five weeks over this summer period. And only having half of a power plant further tightens up the constraints on your ability to manage the water of the Orville Reservoir during this big rebuild this summer. The number 60% kept coming up in the briefing uh, and is regarding two completely different issues. One is 60% water allocation and I want some of my water experts to jump in here and explain to us on the YouTube channel exactly what 60% allocation means. But right now the Department of Water Resources, what they're saying is we don't know they don't know what level they're going to end up with at Oroville Reservoir at the beginning of this reconstruction process. So since they don't know exactly what level the reservoir is going to end up this summer, they don't want to allocate more than, they don't want to commit to more, any more than six, a 60% 60 allocation of water to those customers in the California aqueduct system further downstream. As I understand it, Northern California is 100% covered with the water, but these are allocations allocated for Southern California through the California Aqueduct System, San Luis Reservoir, and Point South. Uh, can you hear me now? The wind's blowing about 30 miles an hour steady. This is San Luis Reservoir, a major stop on the California Aqueduct where water from Oroville Reservoir, much of it ends up, some of it ends for the California Aqueduct. This is about 500 foot elevation plus a little bit. Water is pumped up to here and then and then released as needed for water demand downstream. Completed in 1967, this reservoir stores over 2 million acre feet of water. A huge storage system on our California Aqueduct. San Luis Reservoir has the fourth largest embankment dam in the country. It's located right over there. This turbine wheel is probably out of the Gianelli hydro power plant at the base of, of San Luis Reservoir. The other 60% number that come up in the briefing is the um, idea of a 60% design plan. They're pushing ahead, they have to push ahead with a less than 60% design plan right now at this point. Because tomorrow, Saturday, the 15th of April, they're going to announce the lead contractor for this rebuild project. And that contractor is going to have to start work on Monday, the 17th of April. And he's going to have to start work with less than a 60% design plan. In other words, the DWR knows what they want in a spillway design, but they don't exactly know what's the best way to achieve that design without the help of the contractor that's going to actually do the work. And if you go back and look at the original story of how Oroville Dam was built, this 
this is a very common process when they built the dam and still throughout engineering today. This also raises the, the stakes for the contractor, but I'm sure he has plenty of loopholes in the contract to, be, to uh, avoid going bankrupt in the process of getting this job done. So with the spillway flowing for two weeks, what kind of work are they gonna get started on on Monday? Well, there's a ton of work to do to set everything up to get ready to jump on this thing full speed ahead. They gotta design and build an entire concrete batch plant and conveyor system to get the material uh, created and in place where they want it. So all this kind of behind the scenes work is gonna get done over the next two weeks plus while we're still spilling the last of the water out of Oroville um, Reservoir. That being said, there's probably gonna be still two spills left uh, as, this, as, this, as these winter storms kind of linger on and keep showing up uh, at our doorstep, forcing additional spills of the spillway, further constraining time. Time, time, time. It's all about the time right now. That's what's gonna make this such an amazing story to watch unfold this summer. The issue of critical engineering inf infrastructure information uh, came up again. Uh, it, it sounded like Bill was kind of backing off his hard stance, but I, I think the public pressure is mounting to, come on, man, we want to see the results of, of, of the independent board of um, contractors that are looking at the cause of this spillway accident. But he still needs to vet out any CEII information and then work with uh, Sheriff Honey to release this information to the public. Uh, that being said, there's more community outreach, more meetings are going to be uh, available where we can meet, everybody can meet with the DWR one on one. The first one being on the 27th of April, Butte County Fairgrounds in Gridley, California. I'm not sure on the time, I think around 6 p.m an open house sort of format. I think I want to get down there too and, and meet and greet some of the folks down there and get some more questions answered. And there'll be a series of these meetings. And I'm fairly confident we're going to get to the bottom of what caused all of this and get through this whole CEII information without too much CYA. So I hope that all helps to explain the Department of Water Resources a press briefing last uh, Thursday the 13th of April and put things in a little more plainer language that we can all understand and stay tuned and let's watch this show as it goes forward it's going to be a doozy